What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. And for those of you that are new, welcome as well. Thank you for your support. And today we're gonna to be creating a video, just basically my reaction of basic training and how it is now. And I'm also gonna give a comparison of how it was when I went there. I enlisted back in October of 2015 and I went to basic training out in Fort Jackson, South Carolina. There's three bases that you can go to basic training um, in, the, in the United States Army and that's Fort Linwood, Missouri, Fort Benning, Georgia, and Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Out of the three, most would say that Fort Jackson is more relaxed than the other two. Traditionally, the Fort Linwood base is where the MPs, they're known to go to basic training there. Um, and then Fort Benning is where infantry goes for basic training. Yeah, so I'm pretty much just gonna give you my experience and my reaction to this video. But before we start, please hit that like, subscribe, and leave a comment on how I can improve your reactions as well, and also things that you would like to see from me moving forward. You know, this is something I said I was gonna be doing for years, and I'm finally getting into it, so just keep encouraging me, and I promise you I'm gonna give you the best content that I can give. All right, so let's jump into it. Oh yeah, he's definitely shit. This army boot camp. Before they so join that is the not United how you stack army, up against the wall. All recruits have to graduate from a 22-week program known as one station unit training. Also known as OSIT. Okay. It happens here at Fort Benning. Oh, man. I want to stop it right there. All right, so they mentioned OSIT. So the way basic training is um Basic training is normally in the United States Army. It is, um, I'm trying to think, it is eight weeks long, right? So there's two different types of um, training that you can go through. You can go through the regular way, which is you do your eight weeks at um, your basic training site, and then you move on to what's called AIT. That's your advanced individual training. Advanced individual training varies depending on your job. Um, for me, it was another eight weeks. So OSIT is, um, basically one station training. That's where you do both your basic and AIT at the same location. The job that comes off the top of my head that has an OSIT is um, the MPs. Um, they do all of their training at Fort Leonard Wood. They don't call it OSIT for my job, finance, but we do everything at, at Fort Jackson. So we do our eight weeks at Fort Jackson. You literally walk right across the street, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then you do another eight weeks right across the street, then you become a, uh, a finance soldier. So I'm assuming since they're at Fort Benning, um, that this is gonna be a infantry um, basic training that we're gonna be watching. 2,000 acre military installation that straddles the Alabama-Georgia border about 100 miles southwest of Atlanta. Every year, more than okay. 18,000 soldiers duffers. graduate before joining the more than 470,000 people actively serving in the Army. 13, 14, 15. Although most of the recruits that we that saw during away. our time there were male, recruits trained together in gender-integrated platoons. These young men and women that volunteer to serve, they show up to us oh. as... Okay, so um, they mentioned that it's mostly male there, so going back to um, Fort Benning being, you know, the infantry um, basic training. So um, it's, it wasn't until recently that females could have um, combat jobs. I believe they didn't integrate that into uh, around 2017, so it's still fairly new. Um, so you're still going to see predominantly men in combat jobs, but it is becoming more common. So um, when you go to basic training, don't be surprised if you have a combat job that, you know, it's going to be mostly guys or if you end up at Fort Benning. Civilians, and then we take them to, through a transformative process. You got the Michael Jordan going on. Sold. Let's go to position of attention and you stay in position of attention. On you got that position of attention and you stay in that position of attention. We spent four <laughs> days inside the Army's Maneuver Center of Excellence, which trains soldiers to serve in the infantry and armor branches. Okay, okay. We saw different companies at various stages of training. All right. On day one, New infantry recruits on a bus from the Atlanta airport arrive at the 30th AG Battalion headquarters, okay. where all Reception. new recruits are received. 
All right, hold on, let me pause right here. All right, so um, they kind of went backwards. Um, so after you you enlist, you meet with the recruiters, you go through your maps, um, you get your ship out date, you stay at the hotel for a day, then you fly out, right? Literally, as soon as you land to whatever location your basic training is, this one being Fort Benning, so I'm assuming that they landed maybe in Atlanta, um, you, you have a, a shit ton of drill sergeants just waiting for you outside your gate. So literally, basic training starts as soon as you arrive. Some people arrive by bus um, all the way there, but um, wherever you arrive from, as literally as soon as you touch down, yeah, they're on your ass as soon as you get there. So they're heading to reception. So before you actually go to your actual basic training, you go to reception, which is in the same area. Um, you have the drill sergeants there. They're just they're on your ass, but not not like how it is in basic. So um, yeah, we'll cover the difference um, once we get to that part. So yeah, they're at reception right now. The minimum age to enlist in the army is 17, and the maximum age is 35. The base salary for an entry-level private is about $20,000 a year. Let's go! 30 seconds! Hurry up, find your back! Once they're off the bus, yes, the first order of business is establishing the code of conduct. I promise you, if you don't pay attention to what I'm about to tell you, you're going to make your army career very short. You treat everybody with dignity and respect, regardless of race, religion, color, national origin, gender, sexual orientation, and all other protected categories. Yes? Yes, yes Sergeant! All right, so what he just covered was um, sexual harassment and rape prevention. That's uh, one of our biggest programs in the military. Um, and all throughout your basic training in AIT, you're gonna get several classes that are gonna scare the shit out of you. Like, I remember as soon as I was finished with basic training, I was scared to even look at the opposite the wrong way. Like, it just took one wrong thing because they teach you like that perception is reality, which it is. But yeah, like after going through all the training and all those classes on, you know, not touching the person without permission and all that, Basically, during basic training, just do not do anything. Don't do anything without being told. So even from your peers, um, don't touch them. Don't look at them any type of way without, you know, having consent, basically. Because, yeah, you're, you're, you're pretty much going to be shook. You're going to be awkward as hell once, you know, you go back home that first time because you're not going to know, like, how to properly, like, how to how to conduct yourself because, yeah, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, what he, what he um, described was, the sexual harassment program that we have in the army um and the short acronym for it is SHARP. sexual assault is any unwanted physical contact in a sexual nature so if you put your hands on another individual and you're not instructed to or you're not saving their life and they file a sexual assault and it comes down that you put your hands on this individual when you weren't supposed to that is going to be on you yep you'll get kicked out of the military and then you'll probably have to file as a registered sex offender. <laughs> Do you understand? So, um, yeah, they scare the shit out of you because you think like, oh shit, once this happens, once somebody says, oh, you shot me, just aren't, that, that is over. Pretty much it could be, uh, but they do a whole investigation after that and that that investigation will determine, but like, that shit is not worth it, man. Don't even, don't even, it's not even worth it. I wouldn't risk it at all. I haven't risked it, won't risk it. But yeah. Before they go inside, the new recruits learn some basic commands and standing positions. I'm staying tight. Everyone looks down <laughs> at their toes. You should be able to fit a slice of pizza in between your toes. If you look around, they're gonna see you. Cause you're taller than everyone else. <laughs> Cause I am than everyone else. Like, how's that his fault, man? Grab one goes all the same. What the, the fuck is that? Snack that's hold weak. on, hold on. Ain't no fucking way. Ain't no fucking way, bro. First 24 hours in reception, I did not fucking eat. Like, what the fuck? They're getting meals? For them inside, consisting of a- And they have juice, bro? Like, juice, sunflower seeds, fruits, fucking fruit cups. Man, basically, in, in basic, you have, you don't eat your first 24 hours in um, reception, right? And when we finally did get to eat, we got MREs. 
I, I haven't seen a defect until white phase. And I believe white phase, you don't start that until like two weeks or something like that into basic, actual basic, not even reception. So, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Fruit cup, Man's getting a meal, seeds, bro. A granola bar and a juice box. Well, it's a snack. Since 1775, the army has been the bearer of our nation's strength in every crisis or conflict. Make no mistake about it, the journey you are embarking upon will not be easy. But you wouldn't be here if we didn't Boy, think you couldn't meet the challenge. Listen up for your last four year social. After being welcomed, recruits begin what's known as processing, which can take one to two weeks before their actual training begins. In a little bit, we'll give you a period to go in a room by yourself. First, they're given one last chance to discreetly dispose of prohibited contraband, like drugs, alcohol, tobacco, and inappropriate photographs. If any photo you possess on your phone is less than a bathing suit, you will not have it. You will delete them all. Recruits get rid of contraband in an amnesty room, where they dispose of it by throwing it down a metal chute. So, like I said, I went to um, basically in Fort Jackson. So our amnesty room. Uh, actually, I don't even remember having an amnesty room. Um, let's think. Yeah, there was. I don't remember having an amnesty room, but um, first of all, we didn't have our phones. Uh, we did during reception, but um, well, let me rewind. Um, so. When I decided to go to basic, I didn't, I was like, fuck it. Like I'm gonna get the full experience. And <laughs> I got rid of my, I sold my phone like literally right before I left. Um, so I didn't have to worry about any of that. And they didn't tell anybody to delete anything off their phones because how are they going to get in your phone without your password? And they can't legally make you give them their password. So I don't I don't get that part. Um, but going back to the whole sharp thing, the sexual harassment thing. Um, so if you have any sexual content on your phone or accidentally pull up any sexual content on your phone and somebody else sees it that is also sexual harassment you can still get kicked out the army for that so i can see why they're doing that now but that wasn't a thing before you know mind your fucking business is anybody confused with what you can and cannot have? Hey. the next yeah. morning the recruits report Yo. to the barber shop one too happy man at Fort Benning for almost Hold on. so all right uh what we saw they are at uh reception they got their paperwork they got the little brief um threw away any contraband deleted stuff with their phone probably turned their phones into um we didn't have to do that so the way it went for me at, after we did all that we, we were we single filed walked into an auditorium um, I don't even remember what we did in our chain. We sat, we sat there for a long ass time, filled out some paperwork. Yep. Paperwork, um, direct deposit forms, all that. And then they filed us into the barbershop. And this was like one of the worst experiences for me because pretty much, um, all, all my life before the military, I had waves, right? I was a waver, <laughs> believe it or not. I'm so used to my hair being cut a certain way, certain length, and, um, always with the grain, right? And then you always, you know, go a little high around the crown so you, you don't start balding. And um, when I got closer to the time where I was going to ship out, I decided like, you might, I might as well just grow it all out. So I had I had a fro by the time I got there. But as soon as I got in that chair and I felt them going with the grain and they're just fucking like, they wasn't doing it gently like how this man was. They was fucking grinding that shit, making sure they got that shit. Like, <laughs> I was cringing like a mother. Like, I was like, damn, bro, that shit was rough as fuck. Then they just, you know, they slap you with some alcohol and next. Years. I've been here ever since 1963. That's a long time. Nice. Should have been a long time ago. I know, man. I wake up in the morning now. I be wanting to come out here. Been there longer than my parents been born. Recruits are issued uniforms. They receive a series of immunity. All right, so they skipped through that part, but all right, so in the military, some of the civilians are rude as fuck, and the most rude civilians that I had to deal with was when we got issued uniforms. So pretty much, they get your height, your weight. Um, when you go, like, there's a little section for boots too. You put your feet on the little metal thing, and it tells them the size, and they look at it and they're like, "Oh, you're a regular, you're a wide, or whatever other um, fucking different type of you know size there is." Um, and yeah, they just basically uh, throw your uniforms at you, hear your charges on. Um, for me, I was about 
I was probably barely even a buck 30 when I joined the military, so I'm skinny as fuck. And my uniform was huge. It swallowed me, bro. And I'm like, hey, could I, you know, get a little bit smaller? They're like, nope. That's what you get what you get. And boots, um, they're pretty rough on the feet at first until you break them in, but there's no soles in them things. So, yeah. When it gets to the immunizations part, um, they file us in, right? And it's crazy. So, um, you remember those mail folders that they had? Um, in there is your immunization um, paperwork, and it tells it tells them what shots you have, what shots do you need, um, what shots do you like don't need based on like where you're from or what immunizations you had in the past. Um, prior to joining the military, I was a CNA, so I had a bunch of immunizations already. Um, so I lucked out because there's one shot um, that I don't think that they do anymore, but I, I heard so many stories. So um, the shot that I'm talking about is the peanut butter shot. It's this big ass needle, thick as hell, and it has this thick peanut butter looking substance in it. They basically stab you with it and wear your butt cheeks, put it in, and then throughout re uh, reception, you out there, you gotta massage it in. I remember just seeing, you know, all my all my battle buddies out there, like, ah, uh, like my fucking peanut butter shot. And I'm like, damn, bro. So I lucked out, I didn't have to get it. But um, at the time, it's weird, I have tattoos, but I was, terrified of needles um, when I first enlisted. So it was kind of scary because you line up um, single file, uh, they d divvy you up based on what immunization you need and you pretty much walk single file, stop at the resistance tension, they look at your paper. If you need that shot, they just stab you with it, go. And it's crazy because like, I'm not in the military, so I'm like, I don't even know if this guy is even like qualified to even do this, like to stab me with this and or what is it, you know? They just stab me with shit. Um, for all I knew, I could have been Captain America the next day. All the shit they stabbed me with. Immunizations and vaccines. And get the official photo I remember this picture. Tape, I still got mine in Georgia. Housekeeping details that fill up their one to two week stay in processing. Hey, sit up. Tired as hell. That is until processing ends, and the time for training finally arrives. What are you nervous? Nervous for we found a company of recruits about to begin training in the armor school. Who's a bridal? These recruits are about to be picked up and taken to their barracks, where they'll reside for the rest of their training. All right, so um, they, they skipped a lot. That's crazy. All right, so after haircuts, immunizations, paperwork, you pick up a bunch of stuff. You get your uniforms. Um, different gear, you, you know, your canteen, your canteens, um, boots, and running shoes. And um, first day, you're walking around with a laundry bag, right? For me, it was crazy because um, in 2015, October, um, that's when the hurricane hit. I forgot which one it was. And Fort Jackson was flooded. So um, somehow it ended up flooding the barracks too. So we didn't have barracks to sleep in um, the first day. Um, we came in near the end of the, you know, the whole flooding situation. So they already started preparing it, but um, timing was just jacked up. So it wasn't ready the first day. So I'm saying that because the purpose of having your laundry bag the first day was um, we were putting like everything that we got on the first day inside the laundry bag. And that's what we carried it around. And because we didn't have anywhere to sleep, they had us in formation outside the barracks. Um, and it, it was like on the ground, I believe, or off to the side. And basically we just um, sat there literally in formation. So um, it got pretty cold at night. And I remember they was like, hey, if you're cold, sleep inside your fucking laundry bag. And I was so tiny back then that like my bottom half of my body could fit in my laundry bag. I remember that like crazy. Like I was damn near trying to like curl up into the laundry bag. And I remember just sitting there for a little bit. I think we was there for about like two or three hours. Then we got right back to it. And mind you, we didn't eat. For me, that first day we didn't eat. I got sidetracked a little bit. After that, um, eventually you get your two green duffel bags. I still travel with them like till this day. A lot of us travel with them, especially when we deploy, but I use it for personal use too. Um, and you pretty much stuff your whole military life in those two bags and they stick with you throughout your whole career. They're at the point where they're at the end of MEPS. Um, they identify you based on your, your MOS and that tells you where you're gonna be for basic training. They call you off and you hop on that white bus and then that's when shit about to go down. Let's go, you guys are going to the front bus, go! This is the last chance for recruits to change their minds before training begins. 
like one recruit who decided to stay behind. This short bus ride from processing to their new barracks will be the most peaceful moments these yeah, recruits yeah, the calm will before experience the storm. for a while. What happens next is known as the shark attack. Run, run, go, dog, you <laughs> this is you calm, bro. This is too calm. Go, go, run, run. Get your bags up right now! Get your bags up! This way! Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> oh boy, it's a statue. Alright, so that's the shark attack. Um, yeah, like, it's calm. You're on the bus. You just, I mean, you have your two bags, so you can't really move. You're just sitting there looking you're like, oh shit. You're already probably thinking um, before you even got on the bus, like, damn, what the fuck did I get myself into? But once you get to this point, like, you wish you would have just just quit when you had the chance because yeah like as soon as you get the bus i mean on in the video they only had one person out there one drill sergeant but when i went through fuck the fucking shark attack it was like it was a swarm of fucking drill sergeants and you had like three yelling at you all the way until you got to where you're supposed to be they're fucking giving you three different orders and in your face like knifing at you and shouting threats and all kinds of crazy shit and you're just trying to fucking like get right and you don't even know what it where right it is you just fucked man um this is a lot calm like this was more calm than what i had to go through the system so we can break them down to build them back up <laughs> we're breaking a lot of habits uh from the civilian world and nothing better than a little shock to the system to establish that that drill sergeant oh that man washed his hands before he <laughs> he's in there if he had a mustache he probably would be touching his mustache right now Jen is in charge to let us start that our boy, focus the recruits spend much of the shark attack holding <laughs> their heavy rucksacks above I, their head i hated this man so they make you so first of all those green duffel bags get heavy as shit man because your whole life is in those bags and they when they want to fuck you up they make you hold that shit lock your elbows out and just keep it up there right i remember it like fucking shaking i remember like i got getting to the point where i'm like fuck man you just rest on your head your neck start getting tired or they, they catch you and then they smoke the shit out of the whole fucking platoon but yeah this shit suck which no. takes a physical <laughs> I'm sorry, you saw that. That boy looked done. After about 20 minutes, the he's like, oh shit, to man. Subside. And the drill sergeant's tone changes. We only produce the best soldiers in the United States Army for training. At this part, you're so tired that you don't even know what the fuck they're saying. After the shock and awe of the shark attack, things do appear to calm down. It's a movie. Movie, yeah. Ain't no fucking way. Ain't no fucking way. This group of infantry soldiers in week 11 of their training, oh, okay. practicing on the firing range. All right, so week 11. All right, that explains because it's only eight weeks in basic, like I said. So they're in AIT now. So that's why it explains why it's so relaxed. Um, because you would never get caught in basic training in a gaggle like that. That's a fucking gaggle. Um, Joe Sarn sees that they're gonna fuck everybody up that's in that in that gaggle. Like they're gonna skull fuck every single one of y'all. Um, I remember when I was in basic, um, we got fucked up so many times for you know being groups like that that we had that this whole mentality like, hey man, don't even get too close to me because if it look like we chilling, we all getting fucked up. So um, kind of made us like. You know, standoffish to each other, but um, yeah, like the, yeah, ain't no fucking way. But um, they're obviously in um, their their technical training piece right now, so they're not even in basic. They're in yeah. The mood was much more relaxed. Try to get eight up on my level. <laughs> and their conversations with their drill sergeants are conducted at normal volumes. 
like when this drill sergeant educated the recruits on the meaning of the military expression, ate up. It's a piece of yeah. eight up, I'm good. You don't want eight up, we still up, say right? that. If you want something fresh, you break the seal, it smells like olive oil, right? Okay. That dynamic changes because we want the soldiers to become more critical thinkers. At that point, we are turning into That's more right, coaches and mentors. We dial it back a little bit, so we don't want them frightened. We want them to be comfortable and in a state of mind that is receptive to learning and performing at that level. Up to 241 hours of infantry OSIT are devoted to marksmanship, where recruits fire about 2,500 rounds using the M4 carbine. <laughs> as well as the M249 squad Not automatic each. weapon. Well, I don't know. We create lethality. We create expert marksmen at their individual weapons because as an infantry soldier, that's what we're asking them to do. All right, so for marksmanship, I envy you guys because when I um, went through basic, the qual was a lot easier. Um, the qual was just, um, you start off in the prone supported position that's just laying down. You have a little sandbag, weapon on top of the bag, and you know, to brace yourself and boom, shoot a, a certain number of rounds. You go to prone unsupported, that's basically you move the sandbag, shoot a certain amount of rounds. Then you go to uh, kneeling supported, boom, 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 kneeling unsupported, boom, 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 and that's it. Um, now, uh, for qualifications, we do this army wide, but I say it's harder because um, if you're somebody that never shot before, um, you're wearing your, all your gear and all that, um, you're shooting with a barricade. So you start off standing, you shoot your first round, you go into uh, prone supported, then you go to prone unsupported, um, kneeling supported, kneeling unsupported, then standing supported. Um, you're doing all of that, you're, you have to remember all your fundamentals, keeping your weapon all safe when you're moving and all that, and it's, all, it's timed now. So I envy you because uh, if you never did it before and you're in your first time in the basic, you're definitely getting smoked. Like I already know, like <laughs> you only got to tell me because uh, soldiers to this day even, you know, feel that. Recruits get one of the most painful parts of training out of the way early. Once we check your seal, you will not touch your promat. This group of infantry hmm. recruits was exposed gas chamber. to CS gas or tear gas in week one of their training. You're gonna continue to pile in until So this shit fucking sucks. Um CS gas, uh before you even get to this point, you go through a brief and they basically tell you how it affects your body, um, do's and don'ts and all that. The biggest thing, anywhere where there's moisture on your body, that shit's about to burn like fuck. So ladies, I'm sorry, but if it's that time of the month, over with. But um Guys, um, well, everybody, um, you go in there, eventually the gas hits you, your eyes start watering, that makes it burn even more, your nose starts um, getting snotty, running down your face, everywhere that touches, fire. I lick my lips a lot, fire, bro. Like, I even got a picture. Um, yeah, man, uh, I remember a story. So we went through the chamber during, during basic. We had this um, guy, I can't remember his name, but for some reason, the drill sergeant scared the shit out of him, literally. Like, this man used to shit on himself, piss on himself every single time. And this man, I kid you not, shit on himself right before we went into the gas chamber. And, yeah, I can't even imagine, bro. Booty hole, booty hole was feeling like he had some, uh, he ate too many hot Cheetos. Like, yeah, C CS gas is the worst. So, um, you put on your mask, they teach you how to do it. Once it's on, you can't touch it, right? You go in, and they give you, like, some stuff to say. Um, you lift your mask and you got to say it. So I think when I went, uh, yeah, it was first name, last name, and social security. But if you're not used to it, you don't even get close to that. You'll probably get the first two like syllables out and then you're done. You're dead. <laughs> like, you're trying to escape. So let's see how they do. Let's see how they do. I'm going to tell you to stop. You're going to place your back against the wall. The recruits spend about five minutes inside the gas hut. <laughs> Yeah, that picture I got of myself looks Next exactly like this. Gas hut. The recruits are so basically you're flapping and trying to get like birds. all this gas out of your lungs excess and off your body. Their uniforms. <sighs> According to a drill sergeant, the effects <laughs> of the gas begin to wear off after about four minutes. Dude, threw up. I don't know if y'all saw that. Some training moves indoors. Good old combatives. 
where recruits learn hand-to-hand -hand self defense tactics. We're trying to teach them to uh, achieve a dominant body. Everybody that goes through fucking combatives, not everybody, but this, I hate. Don't be that guy. If you're going, if you're thinking about joining the military and you go through combatives and basic training, don't, don't be that guy that thinks that you can beat everybody's ass after this shit. Because there's no way that you could feel like you could beat the whole world's ass after two days of training for one. I don't even think it was longer than that for us, but a day or two, like, how the fuck, all the, all the fuck you learn how to do is, um, I forgot what it's called, EO or something like that, and shrimp, like, you, that's the warm-ups, uh, you learn tra different transitions and all that, but no, bro, like, you, you don't become a fucking black bro, you're not fucking, uh, Israel Adesanya or, or some shit, um, yeah, man. <laughs> Position. They get out of one negative position and then switch yeah. roles so they end up having the upper hand in a fight. You'll still get your ass knocked During out. In combatives training, recruits warm up with a particularly painful looking exercise referred to as the EO. While laying on their backs, the they have to engage their core to wiggle across the entire room. I'm not gonna lie, that shit burned like hell though. Like you definitely gonna have a six pack after this shit. I remember, like, I might have to do this, do some of these shits tonight before I, um, <laughs> before I head out. They use their momentum, shoulder blades, their, their core, to help them create space, warm up the body. <laughs> Recruits work up a major appetite during training, but Fort Benning is big, and they're not always within range of the dining facility. Yeah, when they're training it in is. the field. Recruits are issued MREs. Which All right, so MREs. Um, this is what you eat. The other shit that you saw on reception, I never seen that shit. Um, MREs, they got different meals. Uh, I think my favorite, I didn't have a favorite. Um, so in basic, um, like once you start seeing those MREs, you uh, out of nowhere, um, a barter system is created. Um, you basically open up your MRE and piece out the things that you like and try to trade with um, your battle buddies to get, you know, the best things. But you don't have any time. You barely have any time to eat. So all this is happening like fast as fuck. You're trying to trade and just stuff your face and get as much in as possible. And the fucked up thing is, as soon as that shit's done, they're gonna smoke it out of you anyway. So you're either gonna throw that shit up or you're gonna sweat that shit out anyway. And the fucked up thing is, as soon as that shit's done, they're gonna smoke it out of you anyway. So you're either gonna throw that shit up or you're gonna sweat that shit out anyway. Um, yeah, I remember, uh, Skittles, I remember, so most basic trainings, you don't even get to eat the candy, but when I went, we got to keep the candy and everything, and I remember getting, like, $20 for a pack of Skittles several times, like, it's so rare, and, like, morale is so low that, you know, those little things like that, you know, it, it, it fucking inflates the price of everything, man, um, because if you never had candy from your MRE, um, you've pretty much been sucking on, uh, Halls, you know, for days, you know, that's the only, <laughs> that was the best thing that we had. And it wasn't the flavor halls. Um, if you somehow got your hand on some flavor halls, like you, you probably could become rich out there in basic. Stands for meal ready to eat. Each comes with an entree, like this vegetarian mm. pasta with taco sauce, Yum. along with an assortment of items like mixed fruit, My favorite. And energy oh. bar. First strike bars, man. Those shits slap, like, even to this day, first strike bars. Um, I wish they sold them. Just in, they, they, Of course they sell them in the stores, but I wish I knew where to get them. Um, cappuccino, I never drink that shit. That shit just looked nasty. Um, I ate it a couple times. Like, just, it tastes better, but I never actually drank it. You just pour water in it, or you can pour the, the cappuccino powder into some water. Either way, shake it up. There you go. But nah, it wasn't for me. Uh, you barely get any rest in basic. One of the things that they do have inside the MRE is a little packets of ground coffee. Now that I did, I didn't drink, but I would um, just stick it in my gums and you know, just let the caffeine do its thing. But cappuccino, nah, wasn't for me. Oh yeah, and since you're Russian, so inside the MRE, there's these little heater packs. You know, you could tear it, take your time, put your food in there, put some water and it heats up and you know, you got a nice little warm meal. But ain't nobody got fucking time for that. I was out there, grab whatever the best MRE is that I can get and fucking scarf that shit down cold. And yeah, just fucking 
who knows how long these shits have been in a box, but or in in those in those packages. But you know, you just trying to survive, man. In this instant French vanilla cappuccino, recruits just add water, shake oh, it looks up, nasty as shit. and enjoy. Look like mud. Once they're fortified, recruits the cobbler was good to though. Training. Oh, there you go, peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly is the most popular fucking snack in the MRE. Everybody fucking loves the peanut butter and jelly. Um, I would survive off of that shit. I'll give my whole meal up and just eat. I'll, I'll trade that shit for peanut butter and jelly. Recruits spend up to six. There they go again, flagging each other. So when you're um, stacking up on the wall or, um, you know, maneuvering with your weapon, you never want to have your weapon pointed at your better buddy. All right. Um, you, we have what's called sectors of fire. Um, when you're in a, when you're uh, lined up, you know, person in front aim forward. Everybody else has their own direction to aim. Um, so I don't know, like how to keep getting away with this. The hours in training known as mount which stands for military go, operations in urban terrain. You wouldn't have it at the low ready either. It would be infantry men are expected to fight in different types of terrain and survive and win the fight. Right now, they are getting their first taste of uh, what that's like in an urban environment. Rolling T. All right. Oh, yeah. Out. Okay. In the I never went through this. Afghanistan, Iraq, we are conducting clearance operations and uh, it's applicable wherever we go. Boom. It's important for the future soldier's muscle memory Flag because is. they are working as a team with minimal communication and they have to understand how that coordination works together. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> you know, repetition, repetition, repetition. You're going to get hella reps in while you're in basic and AIT, man. Um, you're going to build that muscle memory. You're going to get to the point where everything that you learn out there, you do it without even thinking. After 22 weeks of training, these infantrymen are ready to oh boy, leave sweat Fort Benning. Friends and family gather to watch their soldiers graduate on NOA Field. They look like soldiers. They act oh like man, soldiers. they should have tried. Their head high. Uh, All right, so my basic training was not like this. Our shit was actually fire compared to this. So yeah, they skipped through a lot. So, yeah, once you get to the graduation piece, turn all your shit in, then you get to the part where the week where you're rehearsing for graduation, they had us basically um, stationed out in the woods, like where our families wouldn't be able to see us. And they popped smoke, they popped white and green smoke. And then eventually it all like mixed up and it was like a light green smoke that where they couldn't see us. We sprinted out from the woods once they gave us the command, or whatever, I can't remember what the signal was. Sprinted out and we ran straight into formation. I can't even remember how we knew like where exactly to stand, but it was like perfect formation um, of each platoon and company um, across the field. And then the smoke would clear. And once it like fully cleared, you could see, they could see all of us and that shit was fire. I wish I knew where I could find that video or if it's still up somewhere, cause yeah, it's just cold. It was definitely way better than this have trainees that were not alive when 9-11 happened. I think that's pretty powerful. That's that crazy. I still can find American citizens that want to volunteer to serve their country when we continue to ask them to go to combat. Mm -hmm. So um, I was in a 9-11. I was in a first grade when 9-11 happened and I was actually living in New York. So I'm, I remember 9-11 vividly, but it's crazy because like even I, I have soldiers um, that wasn't even born or can't really tell you much about 9-11. And yeah, it's crazy because like they're still um, joining the military and they're, you know, coming out there and fighting with us. But you could definitely tell like post 9-11 and pre-9-11 soldiers. Um, it's just different, different mentality, different generations. These new infantrymen don't have long to greet their loved ones. Or say goodbye to their friends before leaving Fort Benning to begin their service in the United States Army.